staying in Kenya. We're joined now by Benson Waregi. He's Group Managing Director of British American and that after the company raised three and a half billion shillings in an initial public offering. Thanks so much, Benson, for joining us this afternoon. Well, as I've said, uh, three and a half billion shillings being raised. Uh, it's um, it's um, signified a 60% subscription of that IPO. The question now centers around what you're going to do with that capital. What's your investment strategy from here on out? Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be back on the studios. And uh, yes, as you said, we were seeking to raise 5.8 billion shillings. We managed to raise 3.5 billion shillings, which is a very successful performance given the prevailing market conditions. You remember that when I was last here, our projected use of funds was regional expansion, uh, development and uh, penetration of the Kenyan market, property, and a portion of the money was going for debt repayment. Mm -hmm. So that still is the story, and uh, we will continue with those initiatives despite the fact that we have not raised all the money that we were looking for. What that does do, though, is put you in a position where you've got to prioritize a little bit more uh, scrupulously uh, when it comes to your investment decisions. So where does priority lie at this stage? Well, the priorities remain our regional expansion, which, as we have said in this prospectus, represents a very big opportunity for the group. So we will still continue with our regional expansion initiatives in insurance, and asset management within the East African community countries. The Kenyan market still is a, a big and potentially a profitable market. We will continue with those initiatives. The property sector where we were targeting to inject a significant amount of money will be reprioritized. We will still get on with it, but perhaps on a much smaller scale than we had originally anticipated. But that's more for the board to say but that's the way I see it at the present time. Of course, when we're looking at investors that have shown interest in the company, a strong interest coming through on the local front from retail investors in particular, but we've had international and institutional investors not taking up their allocations fully. Uh, what do you attribute that discrepancy to in terms of the way the market's uh, taken up to your offering? Uh, first of all, we are very grateful for the huge support for this IPO by the local uh, retail and uh, re you know, individual investors and also our employees and policy holders. Those two pools uh, were oversubscribed by a large, large margin. And for us, we are extremely very happy for the support that we got. For the qualified institutional investors and the foreign investors, uh, particularly the foreign investors, we were not fully subscribed. The institutional qualified investment category was successful up to 84%, but it is a foreign investor pool that was a dismal performance of almost less than 1%. The reason for this, we suspect, and as they were told, has to do with the U.S. debt crisis, the Eurozone crisis, where potential managed investors uh, had extreme difficulties in uh, uh, raising funds in order to invest in this market given the uh, challenges that uh, the U.S. economy and the Eurozone economies were facing. When you're putting your value proposition on the table, what, what are you presenting right now? Uh, you know, give us a, a run through the value proposition of, British, uh, uh, of the British American as you see it right now. The value proposition remains, as we stated it, in the prospectus. One, a low insurance penetration within the East African community countries. And these economies are growing very rapidly, an emerging middle class, who require the kind of products that uh, we are marketing to the market, which is insurance, pension, wealth accumulation, pension, retirement planning, and all that. That still remains a value proposition. What are you doing differently, uh, though, Benson, that uh, others perhaps aren't getting right? Because we know that uh, certainly in the insurance game, we're looking at an underpenetrated market. But the challenge is actually getting uh, you know, Africans to buy in to the insurance story. Well, it remains, yes, underpenetrated. And we have attributed a number of reasons 
to the underpenetration. And it's all about awareness and education. And as again, we have stated since we launched this IPO with regard to the underpenetration, uh, education is paramount. The Association of Kenya Insurers, the government and the industry in general, including the regulator, are doing a lot in terms of uh, educating the public on the benefits of insurance generally and more particularly life insurance. So we will see the cake growing. And this morning I was looking at the report of the insurance sector for 2010, where premiums have grown from 64 billion to about 8 billion in the year 2010. Again, demonstrating the potential for growth in this sector. That's a higher growth rate than the GDP. And that's a testimony to the prospects for this sector.